This is the eighth in our series of videos looking at how we complete a basic setup and configuration of a Synology Network Attached Storage Device, or as they're more commonly referred to, a NAS. As you can see here, we have already logged into the SRM using our administrator's account, and we have the user settings open. As we have already adjusted the advanced settings within user, we are now ready to create user accounts. You can see that we have a Create button, which includes a drop-down menu. The drop-down menu offers three options, Create User, Import User, and Copy User. To create a new user account, let's select Create. When we create a new user account, we are guided through the process via the User Creation Wizard. The first thing to note is that while we do not need to populate each field within this window, there are three fields which are mandatory. Name, Password, and Confirm Password. First, we need to enter the user's name. Next, so we can more easily see why the account was created, we need to give the account a description as this account will be a standard user account with no administrator's privileges, we will describe this account as a user account. As email is a non-mandatory field, we will be leaving this blank. Next, we need to type in the password we will assign this user with. You can see that our browser suggests a password that we can use, or we can have the wizard generate a random password based on the password rules that we defined in our previous video. We will be using the password generation technique that we described in our previous video to assign a password to this new user account. We now need to enter the password for a second time. This will confirm the password that we wish to use for this account. The option Send a Notification Email to the newly created user will only work if we have entered an address in the email field. As we have not done this, we will leave this option disabled. The next option, Display User Password in Notification Mail, is disabled. This is because of a setting in the User Advanced Options. Next, we have an option that will prevent the user of the account from being able to change their account password. As we are building our network for a home environment, we've decided not to enable this option. While we were working in User Advanced Options, we decided not to allow a user's password to expire. It is for this reason that the option Password is always valid is enabled but greyed out. Let's select Next. You can see that we must now decide on which groups this user will join. A group is simply a collection of users who might, for example, all work in the same department or need the same level of access to a service or network share. User groups are simply an elegant way for a system administrator to ensure that large groups of people all have the correct access and permission to a network system. For a home network, as we are only dealing with a relatively small number of users, we should be able to get away with using the three default groups that were automatically created when we first configured our NAS. The first option is the administrator's group. By default, a new user will not be included in this group. If we were to add this user to the administrators group, that person would have full administrator rights over the whole of our NAS. As it is not good practice for a user account to have administrator rights, we will be leaving this user excluded from the administrators group. HTTP is a group that controls web page permissions for users that are building websites hosted on our NAS. However, as we have not yet enabled any web hosting services on our NAS, we will be leaving this option disabled. The final group is Users, and you can see that this is a system default group. Basically, any user accounts that we create must be part of this group if we want those accounts to be active. 
as this option was enabled by default, let's select Next. Assign Shared Folder Permissions, as the title suggests, allows us to define the level of access that this user account has to shared folders on our NAS. As we have not yet set up any shared folders, we will select Next. However, we will be looking at shared folders in our next video along with permissions. User Quota Settings, as we mentioned in a previous video, allows us to limit how much storage space each user can have on our NAS. For our home network, we've decided not to enable quotas, so again we will select Next. Assign Application Permissions lists the applications currently installed on our NAS and allows us to choose which services a user can access. We can control the access to applications installed on our NAS either on a group or on a user-by-user -user basis. But for now, let's leave this user with the default permissions by selecting Next. User Speed Limit Settings will control how much bandwidth a user has to upload or download to a specific service on our NAS. As we only have a small number of users using our NAS, we have decided not to limit their speeds. Having completed the user creation wizard, we are shown a summary of the settings we have chosen to either enable or disable. If we need to, we can use the back button to return to any settings that we might wish to change. However, for this user account, we will simply select apply to create the account. You can see that we now have a newly created user account listed in the user panel and the account has been assigned with the description of user account. So to recap, in this video we took a look at how you can create a standard user account via the user creation wizard. In the next video in this series, we are going to take a look at how we created network shared folders for our Synology NAS.